My name is Krzysztof Konwisarz uh, and today I would like to tell you about uh, some tools that uh, I've learned are very helpful in developing software. Uh, I'm coming from Java world and this means that some of the examples that I will be showing will, uh, will actually have either the code or the tools coming directly from this world, but it does not mean that uh, the general uh, general uh, rules don't apply. The benefits of using similar software and similar tools and, and diff diff different uh, technologies. Um, currently, <laughs> currently I'm uh, working in a startup company called Pointpack PL. We are, uh, we are going to introduce a new kind of service in, in Poland which will uh, allow ordinary people to send and pick up parcels from, uh, from special parcel points. Uh, those parcel points will be actually located in ordinary shops. This is kind of uh, a, an idea that is actually uh, already implemented, being implemented in other countries and we think strongly that this is time to actually show it uh, in Poland too. Uh, basically, from the IT perspective, this means that we are creating um, web applications, uh, some systems that are processing those parcels. Uh, we are also exposing some APIs. This part is also kind of interesting. And we are doing integrations uh, with other existing systems. Basically, what you will be Uh, basically, the things that you will see now uh, are uh, work in progress. I mean, uh, this is the things that I will be showing you. This is uh, a part of my experience that I, that I already gathered, but, but I can consider myself an expert in this matter. I'm more of a, a practitioner, and I know that the, those things that you will see here will be improved over time. Uh, so, basically, there will be three things uh, that I will be talking about. I will start, start with continuous integration, then uh, we'll go over to the code review uh, technology, and then functional testing. So, first thing, continuous integration. Basically, for those of you who may not already use such software, uh, uh, this is this is basically a, a practice, uh, uh, a process of integrating uh, developers' changes very often, so that actually um, there is no not, not too much discrepancy between the code of, of each developer. I'm sure you have already uh, had the times of running around between friends and, and exchanging some code on uh, flash drives. Yeah, this is this is not the thing. This is different stuff. For, for this you need the repository, which is great nowadays because it's very easy to get actually some, some great place to store your code very cheaply. When you have the repository, you're able to actually uh, connect it to, to, to the tool that you have. Uh, other thing that you need to make uh, continuous integration effective is testing, automatic, automated testing. Um, and yeah, this is this is really a part of the process. You have you really have to have it. I hope that everyone here on this, in this group is already testing their software, uh, not only by clicking, but also by some <laughs> unit testing integration. Yeah, how does this go? Uh, next thing that CI will do is build your project. Sometimes even the tests passing don't mean that actually uh, everything is fine with with the code that someone has just committed. And the last thing, uh, some, uh, some even call it continuous deployment, is, uh, is putting this code that someone uh, just committed and that CI do uh, 
uh, and tools, uh, some environment uh, for testing or for staging. Uh, basically, all this means that you need uh, some kind of a server. For us, the server is is. <laughs> Why, why CI is, is so good. So to me, CI is a bit uh, like like a four leg friend. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is actually letting me code safely. I can focus on coding, and I know that he will protect me from the mistake that I can actually make. Um, this way, uh, yeah, I'm getting also uh, direct feedback. He, he will just make the noise when, when something wrong will be happening. And this feedback can be really fast if you, if you do it right. So there's not much waiting for it. You, you don't have to, I don't know, find a lot of other things to do. But you get a cup of coffee return and, and you know whether uh, the code that you committed is, is actually nice. Uh, and if you learn him uh, hard enough, you, it can do some boring work for you. It's uh, building you, basically those steps mentioned, mentioned before, uh, this building testing. Everyone can do this every time on their uh, personal computer, right? But why to do this if this is just boring work? Uh, and escaping this comparison to to, to a dog, uh, the, uh, I consider CI also a nice point of reference. Everyone, uh, every developer and team has their own setup, and sometimes something is painting also in the environment. But you can consider CI as the place where it should just run. So if it's uh, painting there, it means that there's something wrong with it. Of course, CI is a place that, that may have some environmental problems too, but this is something that, that you fix that, that, that you improve all the time. And yes, our CI is actually Jenkins. Um, you may know Jenkins. You may know also its brother Hudson. They are from a difficult marriage. Uh, <laughs> their, their parents seem to have divorced, but but still they, they bear a lot of similarities, and and, and they do really well. Uh, you can run them without even a server, you can run them standalone on, on your computer if you want to test them. Uh, also, uh, the great thing about Jenkins is that it does not make you do too much things its way. Uh, you can actually make it uh, do a lot of different things using the plugins that are already there, writing scripts by yourself, or even writing your own plugins. Okay, so the but uh, I, there's a big chance that you're already doing this, and this would be actually great. This would be the, the, the way to go. It's no rocket science. If you are not, uh, consider starting. It's just not. Uh, you can also push the process uh, a bit further, going uh, instead of <laughs> continuous. Going, uh, going even a step further into con uh, continuous de de delivery of. Uh, yeah. First, we, we had continuous deployment. Maybe I spoke. Here is continuous delivery. Imagine not only deploying your code into some testing on the environment, but deploying it directly into production. When you know that the code is fine, uh, when you pass all this quality assurance process, uh, not only building but testing, then at some point also some some uh, human testing is. Is, is in order, then you are uh, able to actually, possibly with a pressing of one button, uh, send it to production. And this whole process, uh, this whole C CI and continuous delivery, they give you this chance actually to deploy things fast. You don't have to wait for the release that will be happening in, in half a year, uh, but you can do it continuously. Next thing is code review. 
So, uh, as the name suggests, it's about uh, having your code uh, seen by others. Uh, when you do this, uh, you, you gain actually the insights of, of, of your fellow developers. You are not the only person that is actually uh, responsible for the code. So you, you can do this in, in many ways. You, you can just print your code and gather in a formal meeting, something that I haven't seen actually uh, done anywhere. But it may be really nice and, and amazing uh, to see that, that actually people can discuss every single line of code. Uh, this is something that you can do probably when you're yeah. coding brackets. Uh, then uh, you can do this more informally. There is there is uh, all kinds of ways. You even have yes, uh, short meetings or, or just having someone look uh, uh, over your shoulder. Uh, there is also some tools that that help this, and uh, yeah, and this is the way that we do. Uh, I, personally, I would say that yeah. That, that there is a few things that code review helped us do. Uh, one is code conventions that we actually um, envisioned, that we planned to keep. Uh, in, in my previous project, it was always an issue. Uh, there was some, always something lacking. The way that we kept our parentheses or the, the brackets or, uh, or all kinds of details. But here, uh, actually, when you now, when, when we see our code, uh, you, you don't get the feeling that, uh huh, this was written by someone else. Basically, I, the, 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 code, the code belongs to everyone. And this is also the, 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 the greatest thing about code review this, the fact that we are sharing the responsibility. Uh, when someone sees your code and says that it's okay, because to actually make it, uh, uh, everyone, uh, your code, when you're actually committing, it has to be accepted with, by, in our process, at least one developer. Uh, if, the, you let, if you let the code, if you, you say that it is okay, you're also responsible automatically. You, you don't even think about this. You're responsible. You feel responsible for the code. And, and, and this way also, when you're getting back to the code uh, and there is a problem, you, you, you don't get this feeling that that someone actually broke this and you don't want to fix this because this is not uh, something you create. And, and I, I think this, this works really, really well for us also with, with, with the fact that, yeah, uh, that we are sometimes finding bugs before they actually go uh, further, uh, hit the functional tests or, or something uh, or build them. Our tool for this uh, is is this time Gary. Gary is also built in, in the Java world. Um, and it's again open source. If you need to change something in it, uh, you can freely do so. Um, I, would, I wish I could put a logo here, but this is one of the problems uh, of Gary. Uh, it does not really have really nice uh, graphics. Uh, it does not have a logo. Uh, Get it also has problems with stability. Sometimes we find it eating 100% of one of our cores of our server. Uh, also, uh, not not finishing on this. Get it is not handy. I have to click a lot sometimes to do one simple thing that, that I usually do. Uh, Get it works for Git only if you are using other uh, DVCS or, or just normal uh, VCS, you have a problem. And uh, Garrett is not configurable. You have to do a few things that it, it just does the way it does. Uh, you have even a problem with deleting a uh, project. You have to go to the database currently. Uh, taking every, uh, every part of this into account, I have to say that Garrett, Garrett is working for us. <laughs> This is not the tool that, that you just use and it works, but this is the tool that you have to get used to. And once you do, it, it, actually, it actually works. Uh, at least it's pretty fast when you work. This would be understandable if, if, if this thing didn't work, but I don't know why it, my keyboard has become. Okay. Uh, yes. After after Garrett, uh, there is the, another thing, uh, another nice thing that we are doing, and I think that this is the biggest uh, 
the biggest one of all of these that uh, that I were uh, mentioning up until this point. Actually, CI is something that there is a big chance that you are doing uh, from the year ago. And then uh, code review is something that actually happens sometimes, but but uh, uh, functional testing is something that some, sometimes is difficult actually to push through. Uh, so basically, uh, it has. It's, it's difficult to, 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 to define it. You can get really different definitions if, if you look uh, up it, uh, through the internet. Basically, very often uh, it's considered a synonym to it, uh, uh, a testing way that is called end-to-end -end testing. So, so if you know this, you probably know functional testing, at least the way that uh, I understand it. Uh, basically, you treat, you, here you test, the, the whole system, uh, the feature that, that you actually are adding. You're not testing up one piece of the code like unit tests unit test do. You, you don't concentrate only on one part, but you, uh, or one on the integration of, with, with some external library or, or, or other system. You concentrate on, uh, on your system actually doing the things that you expect it to do. Uh, it's pretty much black box testing. Uh, you, ha you have you have a box and you exp and when you put some input into it, you expect the reaction that that, that uh, it's supposed to come. So there is no mocking. Uh, you just need your system in pretty much the environment that it will work uh, when deployed. So imagine now uh, that you added a nice. <coughs> this is this is why it's this is why you do it. Uh, you added a great feature in the project. You put your heart into it. You made it shine. Uh, you, you, you just focus on the details. Uh, you spent a lot, a lot of time in it, and, and, and the final result was really beautiful. So, uh, the, yeah. And, 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 then, and then after some time, uh, the project goes on. People write some other code. Uh, refactorings happen, libraries get changed, uh, administrators make changes in the environment. Um, uh, at some moment, you, you just return the thing that you created, and you see something like that. <laughs> uh, it's not exactly the way that you created it, right? Uh, it means this is a, a bit of the details, and I would say even that this is actually a kind of uh, uh, even the good scenario, because it it actually resembles the thing that you created. Uh, sometimes it it, 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 it it may be even worse. Uh, yeah. That's why we do functional tests. Uh, you have to verify something to to be sure that it works. It's not enough if you just uh, create it. After some time, yes. As you, you, as you can see, this this is changes. So you yeah you're focusing on testing a feature of the system. Uh, you this is actually to me a, a, a pretty nice uh, first step to, to quality assurance. Uh, this is uh, this may be as much as a, a single developer can do actually to 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 to, to do uh, some to, to make sure that some quality is is um, put into the system. Um, for us, it's it's extremely important because we currently don't have any uh, testers, testers, test, uh, people testing our uh, applications, that the people that are focusing on this only. And this way, we are actually uh, saving a lot of time. Uh, you, the usual thing that 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 you that makes you afraid, for example, of, of actually starting this, if, if you're actually making the decisions whether to to start functional testing is that there will be a lot of time that you will spend on it um, and, and small return compared to to, uh, to just not doing this. But actually, from our experience, is the other way around. You're saving time because you're not allowing it to be wasted on then fixing the features that were broken some time ago and no one knows actually uh, who is it? Uh, who is that? Uh, which or which change is, is actually a faulty one? Which change caused this? But if you do this right away, if you see that that 
aha, the other part of the application uh, is failing because someone made the change in a different place. Uh, you can you can fix this right away. Uh, I'm 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 pretty sure that you know the feeling uh, that when you had a bigger project that you worked on that you made the one change here and and something had to break in another place. Uh, so this is pretty much like without a testing that you are um, that you are tra making a trade. You you are trading something that you can actually expect some expectable. Uh, expectable effort uh, uh, that mm, yeah you, you have to put more expectable effort in it and this actually makes it uh, uh, something better for for planning the project so you, pretty, you you know better how much time you need to actually uh, complete something uh, and you, uh, you're trading this for uh, unexpected bugs uh, that that may spring up some time after you actually. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, you're trading it for, for, for the unexpected things that could actually happen uh, later on. And yes, this is a great way to actually test regression. If something breaks and the code that is already there, you, you, will, yeah, you, will, you will see the way you put it. So I would even dare to say that, that this is. Uh, uh, that, that I would even try to go in phrase, one, one phrase, that people are not for uh, performing tests, people are for writing tests. You would like to have people focus on actually creating a test suite that will uh, test, uh, that will just go one path and then create another one and create a third one, rather than sit in front of the computer, click through the things that they were doing a lot of times. Uh, And again, as, as before, uh, we have a specific tool for this. We are using um, something called Selenium Web Driver. Uh, and this one is, is actually something that is pretty much quite uh, widely used in, in this area and quite popular uh, in this way that even from what I've heard, there is some standardization going on around it. Um, maybe some history. Selenium first started as something that was actually going through your web application. This is about actually browser uh, in browser testing, uh, and it was passing. It was it was uh, interpreting the, the the HTML and the JavaScript that, that you were getting. Uh, yeah, this was supposed to work as if there was a user in front of it, but there was a lot of. Uh, code, uh, a lot of DOM manipulation that actually made it not really like you simulate. Not, it made it not look like a uh, simulation of, of human being actually going through the application. Uh, the, uh, currently, there is a Selenium Web Driver, so considered the second version of, of Selenium, which works a bit differently. You have um, you have uh, drivers that are working for. Uh, different browsers, uh, real browsers, so those tests can be run in existing uh, browsers that, um, that we are using for every day, actually testing how the application will behave in a specific browser, not only in some virtual thing, but also um, you can run the Selenium tests um, on a headless browser. This is nice for faster and, uh, and yeah, for tested path that are supposed to be faster and actually for some servers that you don't have a graphic environment on, on them. Um, there is also some other tools that do the same thing. Actually, what, some of them are building on, uh, on top of uh, Selenium. There is Tellurium that is pretty much a DSL on top of Selenium. Uh, there is Gap, which is a Ruby based thing and, and also trying to be something higher, giving you a bit more there, is, there are also other tools uh, coming from where I've heard there will be uh, someone is developing, I don't remember the name, a uh, tool that is supposed that will be um, instead of clicking and looking and st still analyzing your uh, the source code or the HTML of your page, it will be actually comparing uh, images of 
the expected thing that should be there on the page, and uh, and the things that the parts of the page that really are there. Um, basically, for us, uh, Selenium is enough. We are using Ruby uh, to write our test, and this uh, gives us a lot of uh, expression that uh, expressivity that we can actually uh, use here and, and, and make them concise. You should see this also in, in a second. Uh, Jersey for testing has mentioned uh, something that we are do, uh, using for Jersey client for our API testing. But it's, it's the easy part of, of functional testing. Testing APIs, RESTful APIs is easy because this is only calling HTTP and, and getting uh, analyzing the response. It's not as much fun as the Uh, okay, so uh, now let's 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 see uh, some code. Basically, um, for us, uh, functional tests in Selenium they are uh, they have two elements, except for all the configuration that happens. Uh, we are using a page object pattern. Technically, you can write your test uh, as a sequence of 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 checks and and on directly on the driver instance. The driver instance is the part that is actually uh, contacting your browser. So this is the part talking to the browser. You, could, you, you can do it and, and talk with it directly and, and, and make some assertions. But it's a bit more handy if you uh, split your tests into the page object, will be, which will be actually somehow uh, representing the element of the page that you're testing. And the actual test that will just be using this page object uh, to make some, uh, to perform some tasks and then uh, verify it. Uh, so yeah, starting with the, the web driver instance, uh, here we have uh, elements that we are uh, need to find on the page. We need to initialize them to actually <coughs> make operation. Uh, we are using this. Uh, uh, we are using finders to, to locate them. Uh, you can locate things by CSS, by by XPath, for example, by by uh, by uh, HTML names. And this is the place that actually some somehow is a bit of a leaky abstraction uh, when compared to the, those tools that may be coming uh, that, that would test your application compared by comparing images. You're you're still looking into the the code. Uh, you're still uh, using some, some, making some assumptions on actually the, the CSS that is, is inside. This, this is also sometimes, yeah. This is the part when also some of the uh, development time is ghost. To just map it and then make sure that the right elements are found uh, when you actually want to perform something. Uh, yeah, so when, when we have this, yeah, this is just initialization web driver. And this is a simple test. We still needed to find uh, those four things. This is a, this will be a button. This is just an input and this is to ring. Yeah, you will see them uh, also with other details on uh, <coughs> on the test that, that will be running in, in just a while. Uh, yeah, there will be um, more details. This is a simplified version. Okay, so we have uh, we have the page object, uh, and there, th this is some uh, methods that we can actually uh, perform on it. Go is just uh, our way of actually initializing the <coughs> driver. You, may, you, may, you have to tell the browser, uh, tell the driver to tell the browser uh, to go to a specific page on which you will start your test. Uh, page URL method just just puts the right URL in this place. Uh, find parcel is actually uh, encapsulating some of the things that you want to do with the page. Uh, page object is supposed to be, keep some things under the, under the hood so that uh, when you're writing the test, you don't have to actually do this all, all manually. So, so to make sure the right parcel ID is in, uh, written in the input, you start with clearing it, then you're sending something, and then you're pressing the submit button. Uh, also, uh, this is... Uh, a bit of a, 
uh, technicality, but it's uh, it was always a pain uh, when working with 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 functional tests that uh, you have those differences in speed that the application is running. You have those reactions of the applications. For example, if you are doing something um, via AJAX, you have some uh, asynchronous request going to the server, and and there is some time uh, up. You have you have to wait to be able to actually assert that the right thing appeared on the page. Uh, you don't want to sleep for, for specific, specified time. The web driver weights actually are handling this, uh, this task pretty well. Uh, you can actually tell uh, via web driver to actually wait for something uh, that will fulfill this, 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 this search. That this will, this will um, let the test continue when, when a display panel uh, CSS class will be found on the page. Uh, there, is, there, there is also other ways that, that you can um, locate and other ways that you can wait for elements and you can of course extend it by writing your own. something, some details into uh, the page object, our test can be pretty concise. Uh, when we actually uh, put traffic with some, with some data uh, uh, created just for the test, we can perform the tasks that, 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 are in, yeah, that we want to test in this specific uh, case. So we are finding parcel uh, and waiting that, that actually, uh, yeah, so this finding parcel in, uh, put some uh, some uh, information into the input and, and press the button. Uh, wait for parcel details is um, uh, is, is waiting until actually the, the results uh, get back to us, and then we are making sure that the right option of, of two radios is, is selected. Uh, so uh, this is this is uh, this is a pretty simple way of. But let's see this actually happening in practice. Okay, this is this is uh, the test form uh, that we are actually using. Let's execute it. I used Firefox uh, web driver to actually make this better visible to see what is actually happening. So we get uh, the instance actually executed, and now the web driver is, you can see it working here, is, is doing all the things that we described. This, actually, we have a specific uh, test case running under, under there. So uh, so this is yeah, um, a, a bit more uh, specific. You, you see here uh, the real test, the more uh, complex ones. And there is also some uh, additional uh, things happening underneath. That's why sometimes you get those latencies. Yeah. Uh, why? Why would you like someone to go through this every day? <laughs> <laughs> Every week, even if if you can have it, there I I, I can say that yes, that for us the, the time that we're spending on, on keeping them up compared to unit tests, for example, is 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 quite big. But still, uh, this is this is actually work getting done. Okay, this, this gets boring after a second. <laughs> Uh, you're getting a, a process. 
In our case, it is a pretty simple one. We are, we are not yet supporting production. Uh, it looks some, something like this. So you code something, then you're pushing this to code review. Code review will notify everyone that it's time to actually see what someone actually uh, someone created and, uh, and, and, and yeah, make sure that it, it is okay. Uh, we have get it with the Jenkins configured here, uh, so that when something is appearing, uh, unit and integration test will be run on the project. Jenkins is, is one of uh, the code review uh, members for us, so it can actually block you from passing the code for uh, when everything is okay, the, the, the author of the, church, uh, of the change set can uh, merge it with the master uh, and then automatically, of course, uh, the deployment, uh, the one more unit and integration testing and the deployment uh, occurs. And so we get the code and we put it on our testing server. And then we fire functional testing, sorry, the functional tests are fired. <coughs> this is more or less how we do it. Uh, now, maybe a few big challenges that you can, uh, that you may find on, on the way. The first one is pretty obvious. There is always some cost spent on it. Uh, the keeping up the, the environments, uh, setting up the servers. This is this takes first time and uh, time, time, some time first, and then. It requires also some attention. For us, we had some problems with uh, getting the Jenkins integration. They were not, um, even with use, the use, proper usage of the plugin, they were not playing along together. It turned out to be a configuration issue, but still, um, the configuration is not that uh, clear and it, it, it lacks, uh, there's a lack in documentation how to do this properly. So, this costs us a bit. Uh, other difficulty is, is keeping the builds faster. You, fast. you don't want to wait for uh, the unit test at least to, to run for more than 15 minutes, right? The functional tests are even more difficult here because they have bigger uh, requirements. They, they have to have the deploy earlier. And, and still we are trying to, to make them as, as fast as possible. Uh, that's why we are using uh, currently uh, for this automatic builds. In the future we'll have some nightly builds with testing on different browsers. This, this, this is the goal. Uh, currently we're using headless browser which is again uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, challenge. Mm, because to, because the headless browsers are not exactly... Oh, okay. I will put it differently. We were using HTML, HTML unit which is one of uh, HTML unit web driver, which is using HTML unit as a driver to your web page. It's completely headless, uh, but its support of JavaScript is not very great. So, um, for our application, uh, which is using AngularJS, and uh, this requires nice JavaScript work uh, and, and, and nice, uh, nice actually uh, interpreter, uh, it was. Uh, we, we had a really, a really big problem here, um, so we started switching actually to Phantom JS uh, based Ghost driver, which is using WebKit to uh, as a driver instead of actually Rhino, uh, yeah, HTML units way using Rhino JS. Uh, and yes, we are actually currently pushing this into uh, into our uh, testing environment so so that we. Yeah, we will have those functional tests work, work really good. So this is this is the main part. Uh, this was the main part. Now, now maybe uh, some extra things that actually work for us. Uh, one of them uh, is SSD. Actually, I, this this was always a pain to me to 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 use my previous work computer that was doing something underneath. I, I heard it scraping the hard drive so much that, that my ears hurt. Uh, coding is working with small files. Uh, you, you like, you, you want to have uh, quick random access for it. Uh, it, it, it works well. 
<laughs> and another thing is IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, I'm in no way affiliated with JetBrains. This is kind of a coincidence that they are sort of, uh, sponsoring this event. But I have to say that the product that they created is really worth the money. Uh, I was using NetBeans earlier. Uh, then I was using SDS, which is actually Eclipse, done by Spring uh, Source. Uh, it was nice, but still a lot of time I felt I was spending on actually making the ID do something that I want, and it wasn't still doing it well. Idea lets me just code, focus on the thing, and, uh, and, and yeah. And, and that's what IDE should do, right? Okay. So this is pretty much all from me. Uh, do you have any questions? <coughs> Yeah. Uh, so using uh, code review and uh, like, uh, branch inversion, so mm -hmm. what do you use for source control and what's the branch in front of you? Okay. Uh, the question is about the, yeah, the, the source control system that we're using and, and our branching strategy. Uh, basically we're using Git. Okay. Git does not give you any other option. <laughs> it's, uh, but we, we chose Git earlier. I mean we switched from uh, Merc Mercurial, which seemed to be a nice way, uh, seemed to be this uh, tool that does the whole thing really nicely, but we found that it was really uh, blocking us uh, in, in a few places. The fact that history is, is the same thing, and then Mercurial was, was actually an issue, and we had a, one developer coming that, uh, that was really good in Git, uh, when we were actually just learning uh, Mercurial. And this, and this worked very well because, uh, first because of the process that, that it implied. Uh, Git's uh, rebasing before pushing the changes is is, is really handy thing. Uh, it, it, it lets you actually skip all the merging that, that, that makes the, the, the graph really nasty. So the, this worked, worked great for us. And for us, uh, we are basically working on some feature. Each developer has... Um, it works on a feature and uh, on, on a separate branch. And then when the feature is ready enough, we are merging this into master. Uh, it, for our team, uh, which is not, uh, not, not like 50 people, it, it, it works really okay. Uh, things will get more complex when we have the production, but, uh, but this, is, this makes no problem for us. Yes, any, any other questions? Uh, yeah. How much challenge is it to, to change uh, your web driver test when something changes in the UI? Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on, on the change. For example, when, when, uh, when there is a, a bigger change in, 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 in CSS, for example, some restyling of the page, then it, it, all of your, uh, or most of your selectors may fail to work. Uh, so they stop finding the right elements of the page and, uh, and then, then the whole test failed. But it's actually not that difficult uh, then to fix it because the test will help you to do this. Um, if, if, if the redesign uh, was not complete, right? Sometimes it's, it's rewriting. That's why actually uh, there is this cost in, in functional tests. Yes. Uh, how, how much that? How much bigger time do you spend for uh, functional testing comparing to just uh, coding. coding? Yeah. Uh, how much time do we spend comp uh, coding uh, comp uh, testing compared to coding? Uh, uh, so, some of us will say that we are even testing more than than we are coding. Uh, yes. Uh, I think we uh, we. Everyone likes the code. Testing is sometimes just uh, the, the, the hard work that has to be done. Uh, but still, everyone, uh, yeah, it, it seems that we know uh, that this is the way, and we are still going this path. It, it, it still, it still pays off at, at the end of the day. Yeah. Do you have a dedicated team for testing, or you write it by your own? Uh, do we do we uh, write the test on our own, own, or do we have a dedicated team? Currently, uh, each developer uh, writes the test for the feature that they are 
right now. We have no, 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 no separate team, but uh, we were thinking about, uh, for example, at least making other developers, finding someone or, or making other developers uh, uh, write the test for a feature that, that someone, uh, some other person is, is coding. Uh, this is some, uh, this is still a, a, an option for us, uh, but uh, we haven't needed it, it, it yet. Actually, it, uh, uh, in, in, in our process, which is Scrum, we are changing the place. Uh, every once in a while, some other person actually works on the code that someone else created, so this is the time to improve and to uh, write a few additional tests. Uh, but yes, uh, actually, having someone else write the code, is, uh, the test is, is still an option. It, it's just we don't need it yet, or we won't need it at all, right? Yes? What is the definition of done for, the functional test? Uh, Some measure of good functional test for you? Uh, it's a difficult question. What was the definition of done for, for a functional test? Mm, basically, um, uh, we like the behavioral, sty behavioral style, so, so uh, we should start with some assumptions, and this is pretty much the way that I just earlier. We have the separation of, 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 of some setting up, <coughs> then things that you want to do, and then the assertions, the verification of, of the result. So basically, this, this flow is nice. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, there has to be those three steps. This is obligatory, and and, and definition of done. I, I think this is to just having testing another feature. Uh, actually, even you could push it hard, uh, even further. What what's the definition of done for a whole test suite? And and, and this is again. This is going all the, through all the paths that you <coughs> that you that, that there are possible. Uh, I'm not saying that we are doing this always because this may be. Yes, uh, this this might take the whole century to do this, right? Uh, at least com completely. But 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 we are uh, but we are improving. We are improving this all, uh, all the time. Sometimes you write a test that for a code that was there for for some period. Right? Yes. Have you done that all the possible cases are covered? And uh, what happens if uh, something breaks in production? And who is responsible? Uh, what happened? Uh, how do you? Uh, sorry, once again. Yeah, how do you know that all the cases are covered? For example, yeah. when the developer writes the test for mm -hmm. the functionality he has written, and uh, yeah, he misses this or that, mm -hmm. and uh, this or that uh, brings in production or stuff like that. Have you had this first? And uh, uh, how do you manage the responsibilities? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, the question was, uh, how uh, do we know that we actually follow all the cases, uh, and uh, and how and what would do we do uh, when uh, when uh, something breaks on production? We don't have production yet, so we don't uh, we don't we, we don't need this part. But we have testing, which is actually uh, still some, uh, functional tests happen there, and then uh, and then um, yeah, someone has to fix it. It's, it's usually the person that it actually breaks onto. Um, yes, because it, it's, it's most probably that there are changes uh, caused this. But yes, um, uh, and about uh, how do we know whether we uh, check all the paths? This is a bit like testing of the test. But it's, it's, it's something that you cannot verify in any other way than actually looking and going through the code. So this is something that you want to do when, when you're doing code review. Yes, you can suggest someone that they haven't tested, for example, this path. Mm -hmm. uh, not, no, no, tool, no, no tool that I know uh, can do this for you yet. Uh, but there is other people that can actually say, uh-huh, uh, you haven't checked this, right? Yes? Uh, some say you're a developer, come on, big word tester. Uh, Where you using? Uh, some say, uh, okay, I, 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 I repeat once for, for the record, so uh, the, some say that the, the developer cannot be the uh, good tester. Uh, it's still working for us, it may be so, uh, it, and, and it, it probably is so because there is the lack of the distance to the thing that you are creating. Uh, it's, 
Um, yeah. But as we continue, we, we would like to have people that will be doing this and have and will have specific tools. I'm coming. I'm, I'm more of a developer than tester myself. And and, and yes, and, and I know that yeah, that it's it's a bit different thing than that uh, when when someone actually approaches your code. Uh, with specification in hand, and in, with the intention to actually make sure that all the paths uh, are, are tested. Uh, I would, I would, I agree with the statement, but but depending, uh, but you you don't have to do this. You don't have to have separate testing team if if you cannot yet go this way. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, I think we, we uh, this should be the last one. I think we uh, everyone here and, and the next speaker needs needs some time, so let's finish this. I don't see anyone the problem with some bots and uh, how many browsers do you support? Because something uh, can work in Chrome, but uh, mm -hmm. it can take it to work in <coughs> Okay, uh, the question was about how many browsers do we support? There's, there was a first part of the question that I missed. Yeah. Uh, who, who was it? Uh, how many browsers do we support? Yeah. Uh, yes, if uh, you have some problem mm -hmm. with uh, the Explorer, but yeah. uh, in Chrome it's everything okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the question was about uh, what, uh, how many browsers do we support? Currently, uh, uh, the, the test work on uh, HTML, uh, uh, they worked on HTML unit, with, which was a bit like a s another browser that you were supporting. Uh, but we weren't running them on the, our testing environment, and, and so we are not running them uh, on, on some specific browser. So th th this will come in some time. Uh, and uh, for now also, uh, we are in this, in this very nice situation that we are focusing on, on, on Chrome and, and Firefox. Uh, now now the, the, the things that are failing are, are found uh, when they are failing manually. But the good thing is that we, we haven't yet had a situation that something is uh, failing, <coughs> really failing badly on, 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 on some real browser, but is working on functional tests. Those tools are actually uh, already good enough that, that you don't have this difference. Otherwise, it, it, it would really pain us, and it, 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 it wouldn't work in practice. But, but it does. Okay. So, thank you very much. Uh,